if you look at pre-workouts today, there's all kinds of stimulants. There's stimulants coming out from left and right and center. There's all kinds. There's the dirty ones, there's the clean ones. So in this video, I wanted to go over my tier list for the stimulants because I've been using pre-workouts for around 15 years now. And I've also experimented with a bunch of stimulants, nootropics, ingredients, etc. So here we have a bunch of stimulants and these are the common ones as well as the hardcore ones. There is DMAA, DMHA, erythrogenesis, ephedrine, I'm pronouncing that one wrong for sure, teacrine, uh, oh my god what's that one? Hordinine, Hordinine, Halostatin, DMAA. I know I have a picture of Jacked there in place of DMAA. I mean, that's the best way to recognize it. Caffeine, theobromine, which is not caffeine, by the way. <laughs> so let's start with erythrogenesis. This one is an interesting stimulant. It's not exactly the most um, energy driving stimulant but it's very euphoric and it's good, but it needs to be combined with other stimulants. So in my opinion, erythrogenesis, while it's amazing, on its own, I don't think it's anything special, but when it's combined with other stimulants, that's where it becomes a, uh, S tier or A tier even. And uh, so it's just in between there, S and A, when it's combined with other stimulants, but on its own, it's C. It's not going to replace caffeine, there's no way it'll wake you up if you take it on its own. I mean, it might enhance your motivation and alertness, but it won't be, I mean, you need caffeine at the end of the day to be combined with that. Then we have the controversial ephedrine. I think this is A tier, but it does have some side effects. Ephedrine is very strong. I've taken it on its own and with caffeine, oh my God. With caffeine, it's strong, like very, very strong on its own, it's still very, very strong it's stronger than DMAA and we all know DMAA is also I think is going to be A tier because DMAA I've taken it on its own and when the dosage is high enough it can really do some alerting like some energizing there's some effect going on but when it's combined with other stimulants that's also where it shines I mean all these stimulants when you're combining them it's amazing but on its own this is like the rating I'm giving them so DMHA I think it's B tier, it's milder than DMAA, but with less side effects. So it, I think it's stuck in between A and B. I think it's A, it's amazing to have. And uh, on its own, it's still good, it's euphoric, but when it's combined with other stimulants as well, it shines. DMHA, erythrogenesis, these two combined with caffeine. <sighs> Speaking of which, caffeine, I know it's not that special, but it decreases fatigue, making you feel more alert and delaying, you know, that sleepiness that you would normally feel otherwise. So caffeine is amazing. It's like the grandfather of stimulants. I, I'm, I'm always wishing for something to replace caffeine, but that's what we have today because it's, yeah, this is the most proven, it's the most safest. And, uh, this list, by the way, is not ranked in safety. It's ranked in what I think is deserving of those positions for those stimulants. So theocrine, theocrine is sort of like caffeine, but it's not amazing. Um, it hits in, in a different way than caffeine, but also feels like just really strong caffeine. Uh, when it's combined with caffeine, of course, but on its own, it's not... I mean, it's still good, but it's it's basically like taking caffeine, right? It's not going to replace caffeine, but I think it's meant to be taken with other stimulants. And then we have theobromine. This is also euphoric, but on its own, it's not special. But it's still very good, I think, in my opinion, to combine this with like erythrogenesis, DMHA. You get very you get a very euphoric experience. Even if it's not taken with caffeine, just these three ingredients, DMHA, erythrogenesis, and theobromine. Then we have hordinine. This one is interesting. It prolongs the effects of stimulants. So on its own, I mean, it's not gonna do anything much. It might do some fat burning, but nothing special. 
But when it's combined with other stimulants, it makes the half-life much longer, like especially aerogenesis and those kind of ingredients. Yohembine, on its own, I think it's quite good. But when, they, when it's combined with other stimulants, it feels kind of dirty and doesn't feel as good. Halostashin. So I've used pre-workouts with halostashin. And I believe it's sort of like Hordini, but it's not exactly. And I think this is like in, like in the middle as well as C tier. It's good on its own. And it makes some difference with euphoria, I think, and energy. But it's not going to make or break a formula. It's going to give it a little edge over, you know, the common pre-workouts with just caffeine. Another stimulant that I almost forgot about is Synfrine. Now there is another version of Synfrine called Super Synfrine, and that one I think is much more effective. So let's assume this is Super Synfrine, and the regular Synfrine would be like one tier below or two tiers below. So Super Synfrine increases uh, energy quite good when it's combined with stimulants, but on its own it's not great. But when it is combined with caffeine, it can really, really increase uh, energy and uh, it increases the urgency to get up and go kind of thing. So it's very cool to have uh, sometimes. But that's it. This is not, this is just Halostashin, but I was messing up with the images. Wait, where's Halostashin? Halostashin is here. Oh yeah, it's right there. So caffeine S tier, yeah, I think this is my tier list for stimulants. Until we get, you know, until we discover more stimulants that can possibly take over the game. Like when DMAA was banned from dietary supplements, DMHA came into the picture. So these days in 2023, as of this video, pre-workouts are trending towards Halostashin and DMHA, both of these. And they're taking over, you know, the pre-workouts from employee nutrition. Like their new assassin has these two stimulants. So DMAA is kind of like going out the game, going out the door because it's risky and the FDA has their attention on it and they want to get rid of it because it's they think it's not natural. But DMAA is amazing for fat burning and energy and stuff. But yeah, I think this is my S tier for sure. Uh, let me know if you like this kind of video. This is the first time. I don't think anyone else has done this. I was checking YouTube and no one else had this going. Still in the tier, tier list. Let's see how. Oh, drug tier list. But yeah. Huh. I should have went to tiermaker.com, I guess. Wait, this is tiermaker.com. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. So yeah, uh, as always with any pre-workout, start low because you cannot go back once you take your pre-workout. You, you, there's no going back. There's no canceling. There's no reverting. You don't get a second life. So you're playing with your health when you're doing that. If you're getting symptoms like elevated blood pressure, uh, your heart rate is, is irregular, then there, that's symptoms of you're, you're taking too much and then what you can handle or then what you can handle because if you're used to taking just a cup of coffee per day and you up it to like 10 cups of coffee, that sudden jump will be the problem. It's not the problem of those. Well, the problem is that much coffee, but also the problem is just giving your body the shock of like adrenaline and energy alertness all at once. It's not a fun experience. So always start low. Then you can always add later a different session, whatever. A session tolerance, it goes without saying. Like... I know it sounds cringe when you when you hear it or you're not going to do it, but it's safer that way. It's better for your health. At least know what you're taking and know the risks and know your history, know your tolerance as well. Don't, don't, I mean, if you have a low tolerance, it's a good thing because when you're taking more and more stimulants, you're going to have uh, less or you're going to have your sleep quality will be affected basically. You're not gonna sleep as well. The half-life of these stimulants are long. Even if you if you take it in the morning, it's still in your system at the end of the day. There's still tiny amounts and that affects your sleep. And uh, caffeine, for example, has a half-life of six hours. So at six hours at that point, half of the caffeine dosage or the caffeine amount you took is cut in half. So be careful, be smart. Go to fitfit.com if you need any resources for pre-workouts and guides and whatnot. Let me know if you have any questions as well, I'll help you out.